This vase was made by the famous French Art Nouveau designer, Emile Gallet, for his display at the Paris World's Fair in 1900. Although Gallet also made ceramics and wood furniture that were shown at the fair, he is best known for his artistic creations in glass that combined virtuoso technique with a poetic sensibility. Over 50 million people visited the Paris World's Fair in 1900. Many of them, including Gallet's most important clients, must have marveled at Gallet's unusual displays of vases, most of which depicted plants, flowers, insects, and other themes inspired by nature. Perhaps they were perplexed by this large, dark vase, which was inspired by events being reported in the news at the time. Gallet created this vase with a childhood friend, the well-known painter Victor Prouvé. Prouvé drew the figures and the flowers engraved onto the surface, and he signed the vase with Gallet. Titled Les Hommes Noirs, or The Dark Men, the vase shows monstrous beings, such as a frightening hag with bat wings and a tail made of snakes, who rises out of cloud-like plumes of smoke. Who is this figure, and who are the others? According to the vase's inscriptions, they represent the dark men who come from beneath the earth. On the back of the vase, the decoration continues. An old bearded man with huge deformed claws faces a wavy-haired youth who looks out with a hurt expression. This is the symbolic figure of truth, or justice, who was outraged by the monsters. The dark figures represent the evils, Gallet wrote, of hypocrisy, fanaticism, false accusation, and prejudice. Gallet often used contrasting light and dark glasses in his art to represent the shifting balance of good and evil in society. Visitors to the Paris World's Fair, who were aware of current events, would know that the decoration on this vase, and on several others presented by Gallet, referred to the Dreyfus Affair, one of the most divisive scandals in modern French history. The Dreyfus Affair concerned a French Jewish military officer named Alfred Dreyfus, who was falsely accused of selling secret documents to the German attaché in Paris. Convicted of treason in 1894, Dreyfus was sentenced to life in prison on Devil's Island, off the coast of French Guiana in South America. Dreyfus's public court-martial provoked slanderous commentary in many journals of the day, which was intentionally anti-Semitic in tone. In 1896, an army colonel discovered the true spy, the Hungarian-born French major Ferdinand Valsen Esterhazy. In 1897, while Dreyfus remained in prison, Esterhazy was tried and acquitted by a military court. By this time, Gallet, who was acquainted with members of the Dreyfus family, had begun to publicly advocate for Dreyfus's release and his reinstatement. On this vase, the large lilies represent Dreyfus's innocence. In 1898, the widely respected author Emile Zola published an open letter to the President of France in a major French newspaper. His editorial, headlined J'accuse, summarized the events of the Dreyfus affair and called for Dreyfus's release. The article ignited widespread public protest and Zola fled to England to escape arrest. The public response to Zola's letter forced the military to undertake a second trial in 1899. Dreyfus was excused and freed from prison, but his conviction was not overturned for several years. In 1900, the Dreyfus affair was still playing out in the pages of the press, and Gallet's support of him was controversial. Dreyfus was finally reinstated and allowed to return to Paris in 1906, two years after his loyal friend, Gallet, had died. Les Hommes Noirs is a rare work in early 20th century glass, and in decorative arts in general, in that it goes beyond the concept of the vase as a decorative vessel. Instead, the vase has become an art object that inspires thought, discussion, and noble ideas. The most powerful works of art are those that resonate across time and place, and Les Hommes Noirs does just that. At over a century old, its theme, protesting false accusation, ethnic profiling, and political cover-ups, is still relevant and meaningful.